Congratulations on purchasing your new Bailey Caravan. The following video will show you how to prepare for your first journey and what to do once you reach your holiday destination. In the following video, we'll show you how to prepare your caravan for journeys, how to hitch your vehicle to the caravan, as well as setting your caravan up for use once you've arrived on site. Before setting off for your chosen destination, there are a number of steps you should take in order to ensure your caravan is safe and stable for use on the road. Firstly, let's talk about tyres. Before hitting the open road, make sure that your tyre pressure is set to the correct level. Please refer to your service manual at the back of your owner's manual for details. Also, please remember to ensure your wheel bolts are tightened to the appropriate setting by checking them with a calibrated torque wrench. If you're unsure of what these settings are, this information can be found in your caravan owner's manual. Whilst you're outside, check that the gas supply is switched to the off position in the gas locker. Now that the exterior of your caravan has been checked, let's move inside to find out what needs to be done there. Before you set off, make sure all blinds are open and that all windows and roof lights are locked tight and secure. Also, remember to make sure that your television aerial is fully retracted and placed into the travel position before you set off. If you're planning ahead and have managed to stock your refrigerator with food for your holiday, ensure that your fridge is set to the 12 volt supply option to allow it to run off the tow vehicle battery for the course of your journey. This will allow for your food to remain fresh throughout. Ensure that all possessions are stowed away securely to avoid any breakages. Findings from the Bailey-sponsored research from the University of Bath has shown that when it comes to stability, weight distribution really matters. Therefore, make sure all heavy items are positioned at floor level over the caravan axle. Finally, go back outside and check all external doors are securely locked. Periodically, it's worth checking your caravan's nose weight is off the manufacturer's limit to ensure trouble-free towing. Check that your caravan's handbrake is fully engaged. With assistance if necessary, reverse your tow vehicle carefully into position in order for it to engage with your caravan and lower the hitch onto the ball by winding down the jockey wheel until it sits securely in the cup. Make sure the green safety button of the safety head is visible for confirmation that union between your tow vehicle and caravan has been successful. Lower the stabiliser handle to ensure the hitch is securely connected to your tow vehicle and wind up the jockey wheel before locking firmly in the in-transit position. Clip the breakaway cable into position. Once done, release the caravan handbrake. Your caravan has a single 13-pin electrical connection lead. Take this and insert it into the vehicle receiver socket. An appropriate adapter will be required should the receiving socket on your tow vehicle not match the socket on your caravan. If your caravan is fitted with Alco ATC trailer control, the system will run a self-test and a green LED indicator light on the A-frame cover will switch on once a connection is made. More on the Alco ATC trailer control function can be found in your caravan owner's manual. Now let's move on to your tow vehicle. Fit towing mirrors to your vehicle and check the position of them while sitting in the driver's seat so you can see behind your caravan comfortably. And with assistance from someone else, make sure the lights at the back of your caravan are all working correctly. Once confirmed, you're now ready to hit the road. Once you've reached your destination and having checked in, drive carefully to your pitch, respecting speed limits, and position your caravan in accordance to site requirements. When pitching up, it pays to consider various factors, including views, ease of access, and influence of the sun. Next, take a spirit level and place it inside your caravan to ensure your caravan is level across the axle. And, when necessary, use a ramp or boards 
to raise the height of the lower wheel or wheels. Once satisfied with your position, fully raise your caravan's handbrake. Unclip the breakaway cable and remove the electrical connection lead. Next, raise the stabiliser handle and wind up your jockey wheel until your tow vehicle is separated from your caravan. Finally, use a spirit level to check that your caravan is level from front to back and adjust the caravan hitch height using the jockey wheel. Once level, lower the caravan steadies. If you're pitching on grass, you may need to level the caravan and lower the corner steadies onto pads or boards in order to prevent them from sinking into soft ground. If your pitch has a main source, hook up by connecting the 230 volt inlet from your caravan to the power supply source using the orange pitch lead. Once connected, turn on the RCD and MCB switches of the main electrical consumer unit that can be found inside the caravan. Where a 230 volt energy supply is not available, it's also possible to use a 12 volt supply by utilising a leisure battery, which must be purchased separately, for lighting and other caravan appliances. Turn on the master switch on the control panel situated just inside the caravan door. You can also turn on the awning light and internal lights using the same control panel. Each light also has an independent switch, so you can have as many or as few of the lights on as you require. Once you've dealt with your power supply, turn your gas cylinder on and also open the supply taps that serve all individual appliances inside your caravan. These can be located in the kitchen area. Before preparing your water supply, ensure that all fresh water taps and the yellow drain down valve are set to the closed position. The valve can be found positioned next to the water heater unit. Next, fill the water container using on-site utilities, which should be located close by. Lower the submersible filter below the water's surface and push the hose coupling firmly into the exterior wall-mounted socket. Couple up the two wastewater hoses to the outlet located to the rear of the offside wheel and then direct the hoses into a suitable holding container. Go back inside your caravan and open the kitchen tap, pushing the lever to the hot position. Go to the control panel and turn the pump switch to on, which will allow the air in the system to escape. You'll know once this process has been obtained, when a steady flow of water is apparent. Once it has, the tap can be closed. Repeat this process with all other taps, including those inside the bathroom. When it comes to preparing your cassette toilet, remove your cassette from the external access door to add the appropriate dose of green chemical treatment, along with two litres of water using the spout. In order to fill the flush tank, open the filler cap, which can be found above the cassette door, and add the required amount of pink flush chemical and top up with water. Change the fridge setting from 12 volts, which was previously used during transit, to either gas or 230 volts electric. When it's time to get toasty, your heating system can be operated by either using gas, mains electric, or both simultaneously. Your caravan will be fitted with one of two heating systems, Aldi programmable radiator heating with combined water heating. To start the system, press the power button on the Aldi control panel. Check for the 230 volt symbol on the control panel if you're using mains electric. 
press the menu button to access the main menu and set the desired room temperature by pressing the plus or minus buttons next to the temperature gauge symbol. If you are running the system using gas, check the status of the gas cylinder. The combi type boiler automatically produces hot water. You can adjust the temperature using the control panel. Truma Combi Boiler. Push the control knob to start the system. Select the required power type by using the control knob to select the power symbol. Click to change the setting level. Use the control knob to select the temperature gauge to set the desired room temperature. And then use the push button to confirm the value. The combi type boiler automatically produces hot water. You can adjust the temperature by using the control knob to select the relevant symbol. Click to change the setting level and use the control knob to select the required level. Click the push button to confirm the value. Refer to your owner's manual for details of the features each of these heating systems offer. And now, all that remains is to relax, sit back and enjoy all the outdoors has to offer. When it comes time to leave, ensure all electrical switches are turned off, including switches on the control panel and on the main consumer unit. Disconnect the main supply outside and, if you've got any food left over in the fridge, change the setting back to 12 volts as previously done when preparing for your journey. Turn off the gas supply using the supply tap and at the gas cylinder located in its dedicated locker on the exterior of your caravan. Next, discharge your waste water tank, cassette toilet tank and fresh water tank at the appropriate disposal points on site and drain down the system by opening the drain down valve which can be found next to the water heater unit. Remember to open the kitchen and washroom taps to allow for any residual water to escape. Then repeat the same steps taken when getting ready and hitching up to continue your journey. For information on the operation of your caravan, please refer to your combined caravan owners and service manual or visit the official Bailey of Bristol website at www.baileyofbristol.co.uk. We hope that you enjoy your caravan for many years ahead.